welcome to my TNA Impact Wrestling Review. And a lot of things happen on the show tonight as Dixie Carter had the entire wrestling roster out there. And staff and production crew to talk about what's happening in TNA right now. She says, and she talked to all the wrestlers that stood at ringside and stuff. And she talked about how she was put through a table by Bully Ray and it changed her. She apologized to the fans and apologized for things that have been going on ever since she broke her back. <coughs> Excuse me, and stuff. And she talked about the decision someone needs to take charge in this company. And she thanked all the wrestlers that and production staff that do what they can to put on a great show for everybody every week. And that this belongs to them. This belongs to the TNA Impact Wrestling fans. Professional wrestling needs TNA Impact, she says. And someone's got to take charge. EC3 pretty much came out and said, who, who is it? Huh? Who's going to be the law right here? Who's in charge? And then, which I was surprised at, Bully Ray returned. Bully Ray's music kid, he came out. He was in the street clothes. He looked at EC3 and came to the ring. This is very odd, he says. You think he'd be in this ring? He'd be in this ring after he power bombed her through a table and stuff. And why is he even out here? But he said he'd be happy to be back with the company and at this locker room. He loved working with this locker room. One of the best locker rooms in the business, he says today. And that things were going to change around here. He came back for the fans, he came back for the wrestlers. So, he even told everybody to stand up to them, like, everybody on even stand up, because standing down there, they felt like they were beneath them. You guys need to pretty much tell the wrestlers to get up from them for a stand there and be with them, that they are one and stuff, and not beneath. And that, you know, he doesn't like, he didn't like Dixie Carter, but the thing that says he said she was sorry that she came clean, it's good enough for him, he says. And he says, do you want, you fans want to see me bring... TNA back to the promised land like literally they really need to come back to the promised land And Bully Ray I'm not gonna hug you. I'm not gonna kiss you But I will shake your hand he says and do what's best for TNA wrestling and that the and he told EC3 that the TNA Impact title The world championship will be on the line tonight after a 20-man battle royale will go, go down with all the wrestlers, which um, I was very surprised to see Bully Ray, which was actually kind of cool when he told the wrestlers to stand up because they had not beneath them and everything. So him, I thought Bully Ray was done, has done with the whole Aces and Eight thing, trying to take down the company. But I was surprised to see Bully Ray back in TNA Impact Wrestling. I thought it was a one-time thing, but he's here. He's here to lay down the law, and now he's making a change right now for Impact Wrestling. Since there was a 20-man battle royale, I pretty much saw it after more firm when they first Crazy Steve, Shark Boy, and others. Which, unfortunately, when they went to commercial during this match, mostly everybody was eliminated, so you didn't know who was left in there. Because all the guys like Melinda's Abyss, Robbie E., Jesse Goddard's, Matt Hardy, Storm, Magnus, um, were pretty much gone. BDC, Revolution, all those guys were eliminated. Until they came back on TV, it was only but MVP Drew Galloway and Eric Young that were still in the match. Drew Galloway came out on top. I just stopped. <laughs> Why go to a commercial and everybody's eliminated and then come back on? It's only three guys left in the ring. And they show who's getting in the Hall of Fame next week, which will be the announcement. They show Hall of Fame videos from Sting, Kurt Angle, and T3D throughout the past three years. They also went to an interview with Mike Sinead talking to Mr. Anderson and how Anderson said he's 39 years old. What's his future for him? After that vicious attack on Bram, he says Bram doesn't care about anything because he has to look after the world and his children. Bram is a sick psychopath, he says. He says he doesn't know, but he won't, you know, back down when he's a very dark individual as him, as, him, as, as Bram. Uh, Rockstar Spud. He was walking to the ring as Bully Ray came out and talked about what's a seven letter obese word? Dreamer. Since for some reason Bully Ray really likes making fat jokes about Tommy Dreamer for some reason. And he said, he pretty much, you know, spreads and going around that cyber and said, like, listen, you all lost to Kurt Angle. You got a title, sh you had a title shot against him. You you won the X Division title two times. So go do it again, he says. So, yeah. 
uh, Drew Galloway was in the back talking about um, his title shot tonight and how Eli Drake came out and congratulated him, pushing him on and stuff. T. Great Uno, which I have uh, something to talk about next week about his thoughts on the whole Donald Trump thing. They're doing an interview. But I don't know why T. is going to politics with this whole Donald Trump thing. And I'm sure if T. Great Uno took this as an offense about what happened with Mexico and all the stuff that's been going on and how Donald Trump is shitting on Mexico. But I'm surprised T. is getting involved with politics on this thing. And I guess I want to hear what T. Great Uno has to say next week about it. As T. Great Uno, when he wins Grado versus Spud versus. DJ Z, which had turned into a comedy thing with um, which um, with a uh, Spud and Grado, but Tigger went on with the corkscrew moonsaw, which he only landed on his leg to be honest, but still won the match. So X Division's X Division still trying to rebuild itself up. Uh, knockouts tied on the line, Terrence Herrera versus Book. Which I don't know why some people have a problem with Book coming out just shaking their ass in front of the camera. Like, we, we people like, I think people think Book is some type of serious competitor. I, I never said she really put on bad matches in TNA. And I never had any problem with the, the whole ass shake. Come on, the, the beautiful people did it when they came to the ring. So, I don't see what the problem with Book is. But, like, I'm sure people think it's cool. Yeah, we all know Book has a nice ass and everything. But, you know, whatever. People need to stop complaining. Just go to the match. As Terrell went against Brooke, the match went on, which was actually kind of a good match. And just a very anticlimactic ending with Gail Kim coming out and her new, like, wearing all black thing, taking out the dollhouse. And Brooke got the, um, hit the face buster or whatever, the butter face maker or something, which really looked kind of botched, to be honest. Um,. It was botched and pretty much she got the win becoming the new TNA Knockouts Champion. So she's the new champion and stuff now. Which I'm surprised Tantor's reign ended that it ended. It was a long reign, but so abruptly. But hey, anything can happen. So I guess they're just doing this Gail Kim versus Terrell thing right now. Since Brooke is the champion. Kurt Angle came out as he talked to worry way about what happened with the TNA title. That yeah, he says he does a good competitor, but he will get a title rematch. But Kurt Angle will be gone for a while, which I'm sure everybody knows already that they discover a tumor in his neck, and it's not cancer. Thank God it's not. Um, and they, I don't know, they removed it whenever Kurt Angle gets a surgery. He said he will be back, but that is kind of scary for Kurt Angle to have that. And then he pretty much thanked the fans and everything and said he will be back. Eric Young came out and told Angle, says, um, how much do you have left in you, huh? And especially now, like, how many power drives? That two, three, huh? How many power drives will tell you you ever come back? Yeah. How many power drivers will it take? If he ever comes back to the company and stuff, so and pretty much easy, pretty much Eric Young took a cheap shot at him trying to take out Kurt Angle doing a power drive on the outside, but Melendez came out to help because Melendez tried to help the Eric Young pretty much power drive through them on him as the crap and said Eric Young is a psychopath, sick person. The Storm and Magnus match from Slammiversary played and mostly conclusion and stuff, but and then they went to a promo, which they will have a match in two weeks as. It'll be Storm and a partner versus Magnus and Mickey James. They go against Magnus and Mickey James and stuff, so. They're going against Magnus and Mickey James and everything. He Storm cut a promo, so he took his phone and called somebody for his partner in two weeks, which is very odd for this whole feud now at this point since both men have gone from this company. So, allegedly Storm will still be there even though he's not under contract anymore. Uh, Magnus, I, I, I don't know. 
Since Magnus is during Club of Force Wrestling, I, I don't know what if it'll still even be worth on TNA and TV tapings. I heard both Vasily and the TV tapings coming up. So, literally, Storm here are going to still be in this thing. But, you know, they're not under contract. So, what is the point of still continuing this feud? I want to see Storm's partner, but am I going to care? Or hopefully, it's somebody that will be good enough that I do care. But this feud has just been going on too long, and it's not the same if they're under contract, but allegedly still, both will still be here, so we'll have to see what happens. Um, Bully Ray talked to EC3 in the back about the world title and everything, and that pretty much says he would go out there because EC3 didn't want to do it, but Bully Ray told him, you know, his opinions and advisement and stuff, and he said EC3 is the champion, you need to act like things and stuff. So EC3 went out, went against Drew guy for the TNA title. You know, Drake pretty much came look at ring, ringside, but pretty much throughout then, since they pushed the referee and stuff, uh, they pushed the referee and everything, uh, EC3 pretty much nutshotted Drew Galloway, and Tyrus got in the ring, then he liked Drake holding the crutch up, he pretty much looked at Tyrus, but didn't hit Drew Galloway, screwed him out of the title, EC3 at the 1% won the match, as Eli Drake was already alright, as he betrayed is right former rising member Drew Galloway, so yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but I'll we'll have to go down and see. Uh is this is VC three being the champion? I don't know if somebody thinks it's gonna be compared to Seth Rollins, hopefully it isn't. With his title run and seeing Bully Reading back in the company was a real surprise. So yeah, we got new knockoff champion, so that too, so that's actually a good episode of Impact tonight, I'll say that. Very surprised to see Bully Ray back in TNA again. I thought it was a one-time deal, but Bully Ray is back in Impact Wrestling. So I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace.